Hello and welcome. It's great to have you here on the channel. For those of you who are brand new to the channel, welcome aboard. My name is Keith Barker. Our objective on this channel is to give you the tips and tools today to help you get your CCNA. And in a previous video, I took a look at using a Raspberry Pi as a console server, a terminal server, to get direct access to your console parts on your network devices if you have physical gear at the house. And then I thought, you know what? There are some methods we used like 20 years ago, which are still great, and, want, and they're cheap, and I want to share that with you. One of those options is getting an HWIC card, and this is a 16-port uh, HWIC card, and it has two little uh, connectors, and each one of those connectors goes to this octopus-like cable. Pretty amazing. And so you put this in your router, turn it off, turn the router off. You put this in, you put the octal, octal cable on it, and then you can connect those RJ45 ends to your routers. And so if you have a like a 2801 or a, an old router lying around that supports this card, you can go ahead and use it. So what I want to do is show you if you want to do something like this. In the description below, I'll give you the links for are the descriptions exactly of these two pieces. And the, this is the HWIC and there's a there's another uh, async card as well that uses a different connector. So I'll, I'll put these two part numbers in the description so you can get those exactly if you want them. And, and I took a router from scratch and I'd like to show you the exact configuration to enable this reverse telnet. So what you can do is you can telnet to the router acting as our terminal server and then from there you can go to all eight, any of the eight devices. Or if you have two sets of these cables, you can connect to 16 devices, 16 console ports in your rack all the time. Let me show you the exact config that I used. And here it is. So let me bring my face into this mix. So, uh, and I'll put this in the description down below too, so you can just have it. So it's config T, and then I gave my gigabit interface an IP address so I could reach it. And that's the interface I'm using on my local network. I gave it a loopback address, and I'll show you why in a moment. And then I went to my VTY lines and I said, no login required, privilege level 15, just have at it, zero, zero security, but makes it really easy to get to this terminal server. And then here's the trick. I went to line, so I put this in slot zero on this 2911 router. And so depending on which slot you put it in, it's gonna be numbered slightly different. So this is line 0000 through 00015, which is a total of 16 lines. And then I use these commands right here. We don't have to talk about why. These are the commands I'm using that work. So um, there's a longer explanation of why, but I'm thinking in this short video, I wanna show you how in case you want to try this and then down here, I said I made host files or host records, IP host dev1. And just using dev1 to represent the first device. And then dev1 is 2003. Now that's kind of tricky. What that is, is that's the logical port that's associated with the first line coming off of this async card, which goes to the first, you know, RJ45 connector <laughs> um, on the console port. And so this is a little bit dicey because depending on the model of router you have, a 2801 is gonna be different than a 2911. So if you look up that model, what I, I'll tell you what I did, I just made a whole range like this and I started testing. I said, oh, that works. And on this router, the 2911, the first port off that octopus cable, off this octopus cable, it was 2003. So basically what this says is IP host dev1 is on port 2003 of 1111, which is my loopback that we set right here. So all we're doing is we're connecting to ourselves on that unique port of 2003. So that's the config I have. In fact, I'll just verify that real quick. Sanity check by copying all of that and pasting it in here. So I'm on the console port of this router at the moment. I can verify that with a, a who. So I'm on the console. And if we wanted now to tell that to this device, uh, let's open up a new connection. So here's a connect, I'll make a new one. I've been playing around, been playing around. So I want to delete this. I know there's a delete option. Let me make a new connection. And I'm going to connect via Telnet to this terminal server. It's 192.168.1.11, port 23. Normal, normal, normal. Great, great, great. Oh, back. Port 23. And done. And now if we connect, we're there. So we're at the router. That's the router we just configured. Show IP interface brief. And there's this. Gig zero zero, there's a sloop back. But now check this out. If we make a new connection, I'm just gonna duplicate this. Duplicate. I'm going to replicate, duplicate this. Right click and uh, let me just go to a copy. That'll work. And then I'll do a control V to paste. And I'm gonna rename this. Uh, rename is right here. I'll call this port 2003. 
So what we can do here is I'm going to that same IP address, 192.168.1.11, uh, except this time, instead of connecting to port 23, I'll go ahead and connect to port 2003, which is the first device, and we'll try it out. And boom, there it is. I've got a little 3560 switch right there, and we are connected. So we could open up separate sessions, one to port 2003, 2004, 2005, representing the first, second, third, and fourth on those that octal cable. Also, if you wanted to, we could go back to this router and let me disconnect here and close that. We could also on this router, we could say show hosts. And from here, if we wanted to, we could just type in DEV1 and it'll take us to port 2003 and we're there. When we type in control shift 6x, that suspends that. We can do a show sessions. And then we can say resume. One, also if it's asterisk, the last one, you just, you just press enter, it'll take you right back there. And then we can do, do a control shift six X and disconnect one. And that's how you can use it locally too. So a lot of information there. If you want to use it again in the description below, I will put the, uh, the actual part number for this guy. I think if you have like a 2801 router that supports this, whew, that's a good use for that device. And these cables weren't too cheap. I mean, well, these cables weren't too uh, costly. So I got a couple of these. So one card could support 16 console ports as your terminal server. All right. That is the tip I wanted to share with you, including the full step-by-step -step on how to get it done. Also, I want to just give you a heads up that I have something new that I'm going to start uh, this week. And that is there's a lot of people who are just getting into IT and just getting into Cisco CCNA. And I realize that sometimes we take a little bit for granted. So uh, one of the things, like if somebody said, if somebody like my wife, I was talking about this with my wife earlier today, I said, hey, if I asked you what is a terminal server, what do you think that is? And our, our, term, our terminal emulator, terminal server, terminal emulator, she goes, I don't know what that is. I thought, you know what? That's, that's an honest question for somebody brand new. So I'm gonna make a, a sor an assortment of videos, really short, that help define some of those basic terms that when people are searching on YouTube and they're looking for an answer for just getting started, like what's the console port and how do I connect and what speed and so forth like that, um, those answers will be there for them. So anyway, that's it. That's all I have to share in this video. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe. That way you can know when new videos are coming out. You can be part of the community, jump into Discord. We hang out there quite a bit as well. And I'll see you, my friend, in the very next video or live event. Until then, be well, be nice to everyone. Bye for now.